X-Files, there was Star Trek and Twin Peaks, and then uh, X-Files came along and made something that worked for both audiences and created this phenomenon. So after that, there's been Buffy, there's been True Blood, there's been so many other sci-fi and fantasy and intrigue continuing serials that have become phenomenons. But in so many ways, this is the show that started it all. And today, we have the stars with us to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce Julian Anderson and David Nicole. Today is actually Chris Carter's birthday. Yes. Save it because I want to. I want to film that. <laughs> um, so if if you guys could say happy birthday, Chris, and I could film it, is that okay with everybody? So I, I never, I never ever thought that I'd be associated with anything that lasted more than a, a week or two. <laughs> How about you? Same. <laughs> um, what elements of the show do you think would be different if X Files began today? It's a, in many ways, very different world. They cast like younger people. <laughs> And they tweet about it every day. <laughs> <laughs> binge watch. This, the show would probably be very different in this era where the internet makes spoilers and information accessible and yeah. security is tighter. Um, do you think the perception of like American culture and government has changed at that time? I'm sorry, what? Do you think the perception <laughs> of American culture and government has changed at that time? So much of this was based on the... I didn't know we were going to have to be smart. <laughs> Yes, I want, to ask, I want to ask you questions about the speedo. Okay. <laughs> um, one more time. <laughs> Chris, Chris recently said something that was 
smart that I'm going to copy, which was that um, you know the, the, the likelihood of it being uh, popular during the Bush administration uh, was quite unlikely, but that we're actually in a climate right now where it would probably be quite welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, when, when did we first realize that this formula, this concept, was really connecting with an audience? Was there any particular moment where you began to realize the extent of the X-Files fun? Uh, we've been asked that question, so we, we both kind of agree that it was sometime in the third year of the show. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think <laughs> it's hard to say. It's just, it was just like a feeling of, of wherever we were, were, and it just seemed that people would be talking about that show. <laughs> we <We're> good. <laughs> a surprise as it came in, or did you have an idea of where things were going over the course of the season? I was always surprised, because I, I was never involved in the creative process. So uh, when I received a script, it was literally, usually a few days before we would start to shoot it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, sometimes not, not a few days. Uh, but generally, we get it. <laughs> but there were rewrites, you know, that would come down the pike that were uh, surprises. Um, you know, it was the kind of show, the kind of dialogue that you, you couldn't just kind of memorize in the makeup chair and go deliver. It was kind of chunky sometimes, especially for a doctor. Yeah, I, I got the chunky shit. <laughs> chunky style dialogue. Um, did, Thank you. Did you? Did you start to take more of an active role in developing the characters as the show went on, or was it all right there? Like, did you trust Chris Carter to do it, and did he just trust give you the pages and he knew where it was going? <laughs> you know, since we're the only ones up there, we should tell the truth. <laughs> uh, you know, once, once a. Uh, once a character gets handed to an actor, uh, he, he or she becomes really the caretaker of, and the, the boss of, of that character. And they can, they can write whatever they want pretty much, but uh, it's, it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to Jillian to, to make it uh, consistent with uh, the guy or the girl that we've, been, that we've made. So uh, I don't remember your question. <laughs>
script? Were there moments where the sort of context of supernatural and science and things were required, or did you just go off what was on the page? Dale, what kind of research did you do? <laughs> Procedural, I guess you'd call that a procedural show. Procedural? You playing a little bit there? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the procedure, it wasn't that important to get it so right. That really wasn't the heart of the show. This is not an excuse. This, our focus wasn't on... We, we actually probably broke just about every rule the FBI has. <laughs> I think we were, we were horrible FBI agents. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been fired. Aside from the fact that, that, that we never, ever solved one case. <laughs> Research. Research, yeah, I, I, well, I just, at the very beginning, I, I used to look stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> All those big words that I had. <laughs> Paragraphs, the chunky shit, <laughs> and, um, and then I stopped. <laughs> and then I acted. <laughs> like I knew what I was talking about. So, David, there's a there's a few interesting moments of role reversal. Um, actually, both of you. Uh, there's a few interesting moments of role reversal over the show when Scully's faith became an issue, and suddenly Mulder sort of flips and starts playing the role of skeptic. Um, so when there's something like that, how do you how do you sort of sell that and justify it as an actor, like taking someone who scoffs at religion but wants to believe in everything else? Well, I think that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why it's funny, but it is. I'm not sure why this moment is funny. <laughs> Agree that it is, <laughs> and maybe we can figure it out later, and we'll tell ourselves, and you know, somebody will let me know. <laughs> I'm feeling it. I feel it's funny. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, you know, it's just part of uh, you know playing the part, or, or you know, I, I've said before, or said yesterday. You, you still here? <laughs> First season, all of a sudden, I, 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 an episode came my way where I was deathly afraid of fire. <laughs> and um, I, I said to Chris, uh, uh, Jillian and I watched the motel on fire in the pilot, and I was fine. I didn't. I, uh, so, but you know, I, I had to play. But I was deathly afraid of fire. So that's what you that's what you do when it comes your way. Now. Religion, it just depends, I guess, on the institutionalization of it, I, I would imagine Mulder took issue with, not, uh, not the faith aspect or the uh, spiritual aspect. <laughs> What's going on behind <laughs> Yeah. And do you, do you have a, a 